Hi, welcome to Pikai Pharmacy. So today we will be learning about anti-gout drugs. Now gout is a disorder of purine metabolism in which plasma urate concentration is raised either due to overproduction or impaired excretion of uric acid. Now when the blood urate level is too high, then the uric acid precipitates down as urate crystals and it gets deposited in our joints, in our kidney and also in the subcutaneous tissues. Now let's take a look at the classification of anti-gout drugs. Now according to the type of gout, there are two categories of anti-gout drugs. Now here's the first one, that is acute gout. Now for acute gout, we use mainly three types of drug. One is NSAIDs, that is non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like indomethacin, then diclofenac, and the second one is colchicine. And the third type is glucocorticoids under it comes prednisolone and many more and then for the treatment of chronic gout we mainly use two types of drug that is one uricosuric agents and another one is uric acid synthesis inhibitors now before going to the treatment of acute gout let's first study the acute gout briefly so acute gout is characterized by sudden onset of severe inflammation in a small joint and it happens due to the precipitation of urate crystals in the joint space which is the space between two bones that is the joint so inside that space the deposition of urate crystals takes place and here's the picture i will show you right now the joint space where the urate crystals get deposited so you can see right now where the urate crystals get deposited and and for that reason we we feel pain and severe inflammation takes place and as symptoms, you will see that the joints are becoming red and swollen and you will feel a extreme pain in that area. And to deal with such pain and inflammation, the most common treatment is to administer strong anti-inflammatory drugs. And now here comes the drugs that we use for the treatment of acute gout. So the first we'll be discussing about colchicine. Now colchicine is an alkaloid that we obtain from colchicinum autumnale. Colchicine is neither analgesic nor anti-inflammatory, but it suppresses gout inflammation very effectively. However, such a good activity of colchicine comes with the cost that its toxicity is high and it is dose related. And the aftermath of such toxicity are nausea, vomiting, bloody diarrhea, which happens in a limited dose. But with overdose, it can also produce kidney damage, CNA depression and also intestinal bleeding. Now in spite all these things, colchicine is the fastest acting drug to control an acute attack of gout. And as far as its mechanism of action, colchicine inhibits the release of chemotactic factors and migration of neutrophil in response to deposition of urate crystal in the affected joints. Now let me break this down. So in acute gout, inflammation takes place in our joint and for that we feel the pain and this inflammation is caused by the production and release of chemotactic factors and migration of neutrophils in those affected areas. Now colchicine does what? It inhibits the release of those chemotactic factors. Now due to the inhibition of the release of chemotactic factors, there will be no migration of neutrophils in those areas, in those affected areas. and since there is no migration of neutrophil, there will be no generation of inflammation. And since there is no inflammation, we will not feel the pain. So this is how colchicine cures or treats acute gout. Now here comes our second category of drug that is NSAIDs. Now NSAIDs are more preferred than colchicine due to their lower toxicity. However, the response time of NSAID is slower than colchicine. Now before knowing about the mechanism of action of NSAIDs, we have to study a little bit about the cyclooxygenase pathway that is the COX pathway. Now in COX pathway what happens that membrane phospholipid is converted to arachidonic acid with the help of an enzyme known as phospholipase A2. Now then the arachidonic acid is converted to COX and LOX and later to prostaglandins and leukotrienes respectively. Now NSAIDs does what? It inhibits both the COX-1 and COX-2 isoform, thereby it decreases the prostaglandins and thromboxane synthesis, which are the latter product of the COX pathway. 
However, the anti-inflammatory effect of NSAIDs is mainly due to the inhibition of COX-2 isoform of the COX enzyme. Now here comes the third category of drug under acute gout that is corticosteroid. And under corticosteroid, I want to only discuss few points. That is, it is very much effective in reducing inflammation and it is indicated when one or few joints are involved. And it is also indicated for those persons who are having acute gout but they cannot tolerate NSAIDs or colchicine. Then you should know that corticosteroids produces fast response as colchicine and they are also very effective. Now in case of their mechanism of action, corticosteroids also shows a similar mechanism as NSAIDs by preventing the COX pathway. But corticosteroid does what it induces a protein named lipocortin which inhibits the phospholipase A2 enzyme and it ultimately inhibits the production of prostaglandin and thromboxin since they causes the inflammation and pain. Now this is how corticosteroids prevents inflammation caused by prostaglandins. And again before going to the treatment of chronic gout, we will learn a little bit about chronic gout. Now when pain and stiffness persist in a joint between successive attacks, then the gout becomes chronic. And some other cardinal features of chronic gout are hyperuricemia, that is high uric acid concentration in the blood, then formation of toffee, which are uh, uric acid crystal deposition which appears to be like a chalk like stone under the skin in pina, eyelids, nose. So that is called toffee. And also formation of urate stones in the kidney is one of the cardinal features of chronic gout. Now chronic gouty arthritis may cause progressive disability and permanent deformities also. So it is very dangerous. And now here comes the drugs that we use for the treatment of chronic gout. So the first category is uricosuric drugs. So under uricosuric drugs, there are two well-known drugs that is one sulfine pyrazole and another one is probenecid. Now in case of sulfine pyrazole, it is a derivative of pyrazolone and it inhibits the tubular absorption of uric acid. And in case of probenecid, it is a highly lipid soluble drug and before discussing its mechanism, we should know that uric acid is largely reabsorbed by active transport mechanism and only one of a tenth of uric acid is excreted in urine. Now probenecid does what? It competitively blocks active transport of uric acid by the URAT1 urate 1 transporter in renal tubules. So it competitively blocks the active transport of uric acid by urate 1 in the renal tubules and therefore probenecid inhibits the reabsorption of uric acid. Now the takeaway from this slide is that uricosuric drugs inhibits the tubular reabsorption of uric acid does it facilitates the excretion of uric acid from our body and helping to lower the uric acid level in our blood. Now here comes the second class of drug that is uric acid synthesis inhibitors and under this class there are two well known drugs that is allopurinol and febrexostat. Now allopurinol is a short acting competitive inhibitor of the enzyme xanthine oxidase. Now xanthine oxidase is an enzyme that helps in the formation of uric acid from nucleic acid. Now Allopurinol's major metabolite that is alloxanthine is a long acting and non competitive inhibitor of the xanthine oxidase enzyme. So its metabolite also prevents the formation of uric acid by inhibiting the enzyme xanthine oxidase. Now reduced concentration of uric acid due to the inhibition of the enzyme xanthine oxidase, the increase of the concentration of hypoxanthine and xanthine takes place as they are the precursor of uric acid in the synthesis of uric acid through de novo purine synthesis. Now due to the increased concentration of hypoxanthine and xanthine, a feedback inhibition takes place which stops the de novo purine synthesis and ultimately there is no formation of uric acid. Now there is one adverse effect of allopurinol is that it produces hypersensitivity reactions. Now in case of febuxostat, it is a non-purine xanthine oxidase inhibitor 
and it is equally or even more effective than allopurinol. And unlike allopurinol, hypersensitivity reactions are very rare and there is also an adverse effect that can take place due to prolonged use that is liver damage. Now here is the schematical mechanism of action of all the anti-gout drugs. So there is two drugs that I have didn't mention throughout my video that is one rasburicase and another one is pegloticase. So, so you can see it right there. So these two drugs causes what? It promotes the formation of allantoin which is a water soluble metabolite of uric acid thus promoting its excretion. So this was a short video on anti-gout drugs. So I hope you like this video. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy. Bye.